I'd love to start with something that I think we share in common, which is a frustration with the sophomoric way that women, particularly younger women, are advised on personal finance. Oh, it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. Think about how media engages the genders on money. For men, CNBC, Bloomberg TV, it's, you know, buy this mutual fund, buy this stock, sell now, alpha, standard deviation, outperformance. And for females in the media that they most often engage with, it's, the research shows this, we're about to talk about financial play. It doesn't have to be difficult. Buckle your seatbelt. It's hard. The underlying messages for men make money, invest, and for women, you're, you're a dingbat when it comes to money. You know, save, be careful. And the one, of course, you know, given the Fast Company article that drives me crazy, crazy, is don't buy the latte, invest the money instead, which is makes you feel guilty for the small things. The math doesn't come close to working. And nobody ever says, don't buy the six pack. Right. What is the role that the workplace can play in all of this? It's interesting because you ask the question, what can the workplace do? But isn't it funny, you would have thought that Wall Street and the investing industry, the most capitalist of the capitalists, the most profit-seeking of the profit-seeking, would have solved this problem, would have said, oh, look, over there, there's a $7 trillion investable asset market called women, $11 trillion, $12 trillion when you add in the money they jointly control with their spouses, Let's go after this. So what do you think has prevented Wall Street from going beyond the mere marketing message and actually doing the hard work it takes? Well, it's probably not a coincidence that an industry in which 86% of financial advisors are men and 90%-ish of traders are men and 90%-ish of mutual fund managers are men and 95% of hedge fund managers are men not to mention the executive suite at the oh, top the of the executive suite. Oh, and then when you have P&L responsibility, forget it. That when you have an industry that is so undiverse, no surprise that it does a better job, I think, for the gender that it represents than for women. Um, and that its attempts to engage with women have been superficial. Um, and frankly, have been all about women changing themselves. Again, we're back to the don't buy the latte, invest in the market. Don't buy the shoes, invest in the market. There was one not so long ago, um, an event, facials and stocks. Now, <laughs> I personally love a good facial, but don't patronize me. Right. When you speak to women about money, you, you might expect, what, what does money mean to you? You think power and independence and strength and all that stuff, it actually tends to be loneliness, isolation, confusion. Money is women's number one source of stress. Mm -hmm. On the other side, the act of investing and saving, the act, not how much you have, but the act of investing and saving is the number one driver for women of their confidence in achieving their future goals. And in fact, I'll actually tell you the number of women who said their goal with investing was simply to make more money was very few. What compels women to invest is what can my life be? I'd love to buy a home in five years. Can I afford it? I'd love to have a baby in two years. Can I afford it? I'd love to retire at 62 and travel the world. Can I afford it? And investing rather than being an end or a sport in and of itself is a means to an end. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I could go on and on, on and on. Men tend to want to take on more risk in order to get a return. Women, you know, yeah, fine, I'll take on risk, but I don't wanna take on more than I have to in order to get to my goal.